So let's talk in more detail about the operations process. Before a firm can begin production, it has to determine the appropriate method to use to transform the input resources into the output of the desired product. Often, consumers' specific needs and desires dictate a process. A company must then determine the appropriate method for transforming resources into the desired product. Typically, products are manufactured using one of three processes, something that's called standardization, modular design, or customization. Standardization is the making of identical interchangeable components or products. These are used in firms that make large quantities of similar products for many customers. Modular design is the creation of an item in a self-contained unit or modules. These can then be combined or interchanged to create different products. This allows for quick repair, but it's a little bit more costly. Customization is making products to meet a particular customer's needs or wants. Products are produced in this way are generally unique. And again, each product that is developed in this customized process is generally more expensive to produce. Another important uh, activity to plan is to plan capacity. Uh, planning of the operational processes of the organization has two areas really, and we'll talk about facilities planning next, that is how to, how to, where to put things, but there's also capacity planning, which we'll talk about here. The term capacity basically refers to the maximum load that an organizational unit can carry or operate, how much throughput one can have. The unit of measurement may be a worker or a machine, a department, a branch, or even an entire plant. Maximum capacity can be stated in terms of inputs or the outputs provided. How much of a product that comes in the door is produced into products or how much product is produced that is given that is pushed out the other end. Efficiently planning the organization's capacity is an important process because that allows you to determine how much of a product you can sell, but also how much of inputs you need to purchase and to minimize and to manage your inventory turnover processes. Capacity levels that fall, that fall short can result in unmet demand, that is lost profits, and consequently lost customers. On the other hand, when there's more capacity available than needed, the operating costs are driven up, they're too high, too many overheads, and this can be, uh, this, is, this is something that could be avoided if possible. To avoid such situations, organizations must accurately forecast demand and then plan capacity based upon these forecasts. Just as an example, Hershey's has the production capacity to make 80 million chocolate kisses every day. And that's their planned capacity. That's what they have. That's what they could produce um, if demand requires it. Another way to another challenge to think about in operations is where do you put your firm's facilities? This is a significant question because the once the decision has been made and implemented, you have a factory or a plant or a distribution location built. And the firm must live with it, and there may be high costs involved. When the company decides to relocate or to locate or open a facility in a new location, it has to pay careful attention to several factors. For example, its proximity to the market, how close it is, the availability of the raw materials and how far they have to come to get to the factory, the availability of transportation resources, so shipping finished goods or shipping product to the pro or inputs to the factory, the availability of power and energy, the availability of labor, Climate influences, you know, weather, you don't want to be in a place where you have to worry about storms or, uh, or very cold winters or whatever. Uh, community characteristics, quality of life for the people that work there. Taxes and other inducements that might cause a factory to be located in one situation, one location or another. Sometimes tax reductions are provided by communities. They're, rec they're an increasingly important criteria in recent years. Oftentimes, the faculty location decision is complex because it involves evaluating many factors that we just discussed, and many of these can't really be measured with precision. Because of the long-term impact of the decision, however, it is one that cannot be taken lightly and is a very large decision taken, one of the larger decisions taken by an organization as to where to put their, their facilities. 
is also how these facilities are arranged once they're being put into place. And there's some examples we'll talk about here. Um, how one puts the equipment in place or how one builds the facilities with different departments and the likes. There are three basic layouts, the fixed position, the process layout, and the product layout. A company uses a fixed position layout when they bring all the resources that are required to create the product to a central location. The product is perhaps an office building, a house, an a hydroelectric plant, or, some, or a bridge or something like that, something that does not move. A company using a fixed position layout may be called a project organization because it typically is, it's typically involved in large complex projects such as construction or exploration. Building an office building is an example of a project organization, the organization that comes together to build an office building or a bridge as I said before. This is a fixed position. Everything is in one location. It's delivered there. Product organizations generally make a unique product and they relied on highly skilled labor of various types and they produce very few units. They have very high production costs per unit for that reason. Another important layout is called the process layout. Uh, this organizes the transformation process into departments. These are groups that do related processes. A hospital is an example of that. There's an x-ray unit, an obstetrics unit, and so on. These types of organizations are also sometimes called intermittent organizations because they deal with products to a lesser magnitude than do uh, they deal with than do the project organizations. And their products are not necessarily unique, but they do possess a significant number of differences. Because of the low level of output, the cost per unit of product is generally high in a process layout as well in these intermittent organizations. And finally, in these three main layouts is the product layout, which requires that production be broken down into relatively small tasks and assigned to workers. This is the assembly line factory layout we typically think of when you see the ads on TV with these giant robots and cars coming through. These are product layouts. The simple tasks for workers and machines, they're usually positioned along an assembly line. Workers remain in one location and the equipment is often brought to them, moves from worker to worker. Each person in turn performs his or her required task or activity on that particular product as it moves along the assembly line. Companies that use assembly lines are usually known as continuous manufacturing organizations. This is because they set up and they run continuously creating product after product after product after product, all with similar characteristics. Apple stores are designed to be efficient use of space. The layout in the store allows customers to test its products before purchasing. This is an example of using the layout technology in a very similar manner, but in the customer experience space. They are efficient. They're laid out in a way that customers learn how to, what sections to go to when they get there. Uh, the customer effectively participating in the operations layout of this particular facility. Uh, so you could see that even though we think about operations and, and process layouts and the context of building products and services, it also is very useful in designing the experience that customers have in a store like an Apple store, in a fast food place, in the kinds of um, uh, more ad hoc, uh, fast casual type restaurants we go to, uh, to go to the different stations and take care of what needs to be done. So you could see how this is useful, this whole way of thinking about making life easier and reducing the overall costs uh, is applied in all aspects of business. In the next lecture, we'll talk about operations technologies.